Hey creeps, it's Cameron again and welcome back to my channel where I talk about books, movies, writing, and all things spooky. And today on Library Macabre I have part one of a very extensive book haul. So in this book haul and in the next part, which I'll post very, very soon, I'm going to be showing you all the books that I got in August, September, and October. I'm a little bit behind on book hauls, but I would really like to catch up because a lot of you guys have been requesting them. Um, so I'm going to start with some of the books that I received for review. I haven't really been accepting many for review just because I have so, so, so much to read. Uh, literally like a hundred books. It's insane. But I have received a couple of unsolicited books and then there were a couple that I've accepted because they were on the shorter side. Um, the first one right here, this was actually sent to me unsolicited, but I wound up receiving a copy in the uh, Night Wars package. This is called Standalone by Paul Michael Anderson and this is a um, kind of like a meta slasher novel so obviously i'm very excited to read this it's under 200 pages so it's a nice quick read i also received a copy of who's there a collection of stories by damas rio i was sent this for a review so thank you so much to the author for sending this along very very short little short story collection so i went ahead and accepted this i've heard great things about it a lot of people have really raved about it a lot and i like the cover it's very creepy so I'm looking forward to getting into that one as well. Graveyard Smash, Women of Horror Anthology, Volume 2 from Kendisha Press. Uh, this one I'm very excited to read. I have read one of the stories, actually, by my very good friend Janine Pipe, um, just because I was really excited to read her story, The Invitation. I thought it was great. Really, really fun story. Kind of reminds me of Buffy the Vampire Slayer. But I'm really excited to dig into the rest of the stories and see what all of these lovely ladies have to offer. I also received a copy of Bottom Feeders by Jerry Roth uh, for review. I was really excited to read this because the author is uh, local. He's from Ohio. Um, but he contacted me and said that uh, this uh, edition of the book actually has some errors and they're fixing them right now. So there should be a revised edition of this coming out really soon. Uh, but this is like a prison horror book. So I will read this once the uh, revised edition comes out and do a review. All right. So those were all of the books that I received for a review in August. And I also got my big order of Flame Tree Press hardcovers that I ordered during their 4th of July sale. Boy, that was a long time back, wasn't it? Um, I picked up a couple of Tim Wagner books. This one is called They Kill, and this one is The Mouth of the Dark. I really don't know what a lot of these books are about. Uh, they were just so cheap, and I've heard that they're good, so I went ahead and just went for it. I also picked up The Haunting of Henderson Close by Catherine Cavendish. Heard great things about this author, and I believe this is just your a classic kind of haunted house story. I had to pick up a couple books by Hunter Shea. So we have Ghost Mine and Slash, which is of course a slasher. Uh, I love slashers, so super excited to read this one. And this sounds really good as well. Those Who Came Before by J.H. Moncrief. I have heard, again, great things about this book. It's about a bunch of friends that go camping and there's apparently a Native American spirit wandering the woods. That should be really cool. I ordered a couple of books by John Everson. This one is called The Devil's Equinox, and this one is called The House by the Cemetery. I've heard a lot about this one in particular. My friend John Tripp read this and really liked it. So he's been recommending that one to me, and um, I went ahead and just got this one because, I mean, look how good they go together. I should binge these. I also ordered D.W. Galitzby's The Toy Thief. I love this cover. Anything that has a creepy doll on the cover, I'm gonna get. And the last book that I ordered during the Flame Tree sale is Stoker's Wild by Stephen Hopstaken and Melissa Prusi. I'm not sure if I pronounced either of those names correctly. If I didn't, I am very, very sorry. Um, this just sounds really fun. It's about uh, Bram Stoker and Oscar Wilde teaming up. 
I think, to uh, hunt down all kinds of supernatural creatures. Uh, it sounds like Penny Dreadful, it just sounds like a blast. Next is a tiny little book that I saw somebody post about on Instagram, I can't remember who, and I looked it up on Amazon and I just I had to buy it because it's adorable. It is called Dangerous Games to Play in the Dark, A Guide to Summoning Spirits, Divining the Future, and Invoking the Supernatural. And this is basically exactly what it sounds like. It's a book of games that uh, teenagers usually play at sleepovers, like uh, Bloody Mary, um, Ouija Board is in here, um, The Elevator Game, uh, The Answer Man, which I had never heard of until I read that page, and it's pretty creepy. Uh, just all kinds of creepy, dangerous games to play at sleepovers. Um, I certainly am not one to uh, partake in games like this, just because it can't be too safe. Um, but the idea of them really interests me. I just find it spooky. And I thought that if I read this, I might get some ideas for some spooky, scary stories. So yeah, there's dangerous games to play in the dark. I also ordered Dead Star Park by Mark Hill as soon as I saw, um, I think it was Well Read Beard, he did a review of this one. Uh, he said it was Lovecraftian amusement park horror, and I was sold. I also went to a used bookstore and found a couple of vintage horror hardcovers. The first one here is a first edition hardcover of Haunted by James Herbert. Now James Herbert is mostly a blind spot for me. I've not read a whole lot of his work and I saw this and I had to have it because I love the gothic uh, haunted house vibe. Uh, I also read the first page and it really grabbed me. so. Very much looking forward to reading this. And I also picked up a first edition hardcover of Death Bite. I actually have the paperback of this, but this is one of the rare cases where the hardcover is actually better than the paperback cover. Um, I just like this a lot more. Uh, of course, I'm gonna keep my paperback because I am a completionist and a collector, but uh, yeah, I just, I had to pick this one up because it's awesome. Of course, I had to order my copy of Clown in a Cornfield by Adam Caesar. This is the really nice hardcover edition. I received an arc of this that I recently reviewed, so I'll post that up there so you can go and check out what I thought. Uh, but of course, I liked it enough that I had to buy a hardcover to put in my collection. I was also at Barnes & Noble, and I saw this book in the children's section. This is The Fear Zone by K.R. Alexander. And this guy's apparently written a lot of uh, spooky middle grade books. And I saw this one and I had to have it. This just looks really really fun um, clowns don't creep me out but I love creepy clowns so I don't understand and here's another spooky middle grade book this is called mr. moonbeam and the Halloween crystal by Ryan Cohen I wanted to read this for Halloween but I did not get a chance to read it so it's gonna go into next year's Halloween reading pile uh, but this just sounds really really cute it's like a, a middle grade Halloween fantasy adventure. It seems more fantasy than anything, um, but obviously it's probably going to have some spooky elements since it takes place on Halloween. Just thought that was really cute, and it was very inexpensive on Amazon as well. Lastly, probably what you're most excited to see are all of the vintage horror paperbacks. My friend David Dodd was very kind, and he sent me some that he had duplicates of, and then also he found a ton of YA horror books at a bookstore near where he lives and he sent me pictures of all of the shelves and basically I just picked out all the books that I wanted and sent him money. So I got a whole bunch of really cool YA horror books. I'll show you all of the adult horror books first. Here is Monster. This is by Jeffrey Convitz. I think is how you pronounce it. He wrote The Sentinel. Uh, this is his take on the Loch Ness Monster. So. Sounds really cool. I've actually not read any of his books. Here we have The Surrogate by Nick Sherman, classic cover. I have a very nice copy of this somewhere on my shelves, but he had a duplicate reading copy. This one's a little bit rough, so I told him I'd take it off his hands so that way I can read it and I won't ruin my nice minty copy. Similar scenario uh, is The Sharing by John Simmons, another book that I have a really nice copy of, but he had a duplicate reading copy, so I took this one off his hands. I also got a copy of The Stepchild from him. This is by Joanne Fluke. She was their little girl, their very own, but who would protect her? What would save her from 
the stepchild. Uh, next is The Confessional by Jack Olesker, I think. This is a leisure book. Um, I actually got this at the same bookstore where I bought Death Bite and Haunted by James Herbert. This is a really nice old leisure copy. Another one that I got from David Dodd is Winter Wolves. Look at that shiny cover. Uh, this is by Errol Westcott. Uh, I believe this is a werewolf novel probably taking place in the winter time judging by the title. Next we have Damon by C. Terry Klein Jr. This is one that I've heard a lot about. I think this was actually featured in Paperbacks from Hell. Can't remember for sure. All right, now we can get into all of the YA horror paperbacks. The first one I have is book three in the Power series. This one is called The Fear Experiment. I think I have one other book in the series, but I would definitely like to find the rest. Here we have book number five in the Scream series. This is called My True Love Gave to Me. I have a bunch of books in this series. I think I've got almost all of them now. This was one of the hardest books to find in the whole series. I've been looking for it forever. So glad to finally find this. This is a, a Christmas horror story, so I'll definitely be reading this at Christmas time. Here we have The Last Victim. This is one published in the 90s by Flair. Uh, the tagline is, he's watching and waiting just for her. So obviously it's one of those uh, 90s stalker books. Another one from Avon Flair is Die For Me by Carol Gorman. Uh, looks like a Ouija kind of book. Another Avon Flair book. This is Crash Landing by Nicole Davidson. I have a whole bunch of her books, but I've never read any of them, so I'm going to have to do that at some point. By Daniel Cohen, we have The Restless Dead, Ghostly Tales from Around the World. I used to read a whole bunch of this guy's books when I was a kid. These were my favorite books to read, just ghost stories from around the world. Uh, yeah, I never read this one, though, so I'm glad to have a copy of it. Where Monsters Walk by Michael Avalone. Um, this is, yeah, a compilation of 13 macabre stories about people caught in the toils of mysteries that cannot be solved, crimes that cannot be punished. So just a good old children's book full of spooky stories. Next we have A Chill in the Lane, a ghost story by Mabel Esther Allen. And this just sounded interesting to me. I'd never heard of it, but it sounds spooky. Here we have a book in the Shockers series, which I never ever heard of before. This one's called Dead End. This is by John Peel, who has written a lot of books, lots of YA, and I believe a couple of adult horror books as well. Okay, next up is Forbidden Doors. This is book number one. It's called The Society. Um, I didn't know what it was. I just saw the cover. I saw that it looked like a YA horror book, so I requested that David pick it up for me. And then I get it in the mail and I realize this is a Christian horror series. And I gotta tell you, I've read quite a few Christian horror books, especially growing up as a kid, um, and they're not good. But I don't know, there's just something so terrible about them that you can't look away. And I think this is gonna be one of those. It says, Ouija boards, amulets, charm pouches, just kid stuff, right? At least, that's what Rebecca and Scott think when they first move to Crescent Bay. Then they run into the Society, a select group of students who practice occultic rituals using these objects, charm pouches, a group that decides Becca and Scott are a threat to them and their powers. Soon, the brother and sister discover the hidden power behind the games. Not until the final showdown, when their faith is put to the ultimate test, do Scott and Rebecca realize the awesome power and victory of God over darkness? I don't know, I just can't wait to read it. Also, we have Stage Fright. This is by Erica Field. Honestly, a lot of these books are probably just as bad as the society is gonna be, but I can't stop reading them. I love YA horror books from the 90s. They're just so much fun and this looks like no exception. Here we have Tower of Evil by Mary Main, volume number three in the Midnight Secrets series. Uh, this is obviously cashing in off the craft. 
From Harper, we have a book in the Dark Hearts series. This one is called Magic at the Crossroads by Daniel Parker. Uh, I have one of the other books in this series. I think there are three total. can't remember which one it is. Uh, but right now I have two of the books, so I just need to get one more. By Simon Luke, we have Daughter of Darkness, which is a book in the Midnight Place series. Really cool cover on that one. Book number two in the Year of the Cat series. This one is called The Hunt. So obviously I need to get the other two books in this trilogy. And a book in the Taggard Point series. This one is called The Clown. I have one other book in this series as well. Um, and I was looking the series up and I saw the cover of this one. And I really, really wanted it. So glad that David was able to find this at the bookstore. So there you go. Those are all of the books that I got in August and I will be back very very soon to show you all the ones that I got in September and October. Thank you all so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Later creeps.